Hi friends, thanks for joining in. I've had several requests uh, over the past couple of weeks. George, can you show me how to chain strings on my hurdy-gurdy? Maybe give me some tips to make the process a little easier. So that's the topic of today's webcast. Thanks for joining in. I'm George Leverett of Alterwind Music and you are watching Hurdy-Gurdy World. The first thing we're going to start with is um, our tools. Of course, when you're changing strings, you want the strings. Uh, also handy, uh, super glue. Here it is. I got the gel stuff because it doesn't run everywhere. There we go in the shot. Some scissors or something to cut the string with. I have some handy wire cutters. They all serve the same purpose. A paper towel to wipe up any extra super glue that runs off and a ruler for the trumpet adjustments. We're going to start with our drone strings. Now I want to mention that today I'm not going to cover all the strings of a hurdy-gurdy. I'm just going to cover the low drones and the trumpet. The melody strings and the moosh are usually pretty easy to change so they don't require any special consideration. So we'll just cover the the tricky ones here, the ones that may or may not give a new player a little more grief. Uh, other things you'll need, of course, are your cotton and rosin and your tuner, but you probably already have those on hand anyway. Let's get started with our low drones. I'm going to change views here and focus in on an instrument so we could get a really nice look at what I'm doing while I do it. Here I have Frankenstina, my festival hurdy-gurdy. I introduced her in a past webcast. I'm getting ready to change the low drones on her. Uh, in this case, I already removed them. That's why they're not in position. So this should go pretty quickly. I'll start with my gross board on. Feed it through the end of the instrument. That part's pretty easy. Run it over the bridge pin to hold it in alignment. The other end is the part that can be a little tricky for new players or people who have not done it before. Wrapping it around the tuner. Now, one thing about the low drone strings, usually they're cello strings. Uh, cello strings don't really come in a great length for hurdy-gurdies, so we have to cut them. Of course, if I cut across the winding, I risk destroying the string as it could come unwound. The string has a cloth winding on the end here. Uh, that's ideally if you can cut it there, but then you're going to have so much string left over, you, it's just going to be too long. Back in the day, meaning as far as I seem to recollect around six months ago and prior, you could actually get one eighth cello one eighth size cello strings, which the cloth winding would work great for a hurdy-gurdy. Uh, doesn't seem anybody's making those anymore. So we're gonna have to cut the string. Again, I mentioned a moment ago that it's tricky when you cut across a wound string. So my hack for that is to use super glue. Uh, again, I'm, I mentioned this a moment ago. I like the gel stuff, it doesn't run everywhere. So how much string do I cut? Okay, I pull it past the tuner, just a couple of inches. If you're not sure what that means, generally speaking, the length between the tip of your finger and the main joint, about that length of string, will be how, how long to leave past the tuner. So I'm going to smear a little super glue on the string. This will prevent it from unraveling or raveling, however you want to look at it, after I cut it. This is where a paper towel comes in handy. As you can see, I've coated the end of the string with super glue. Now I'm going to cut it, and this should prevent it from unwinding. The other trick to this is about kinking the string. When you're working with metal strings, 
such as a guitar string, it's really tempting just to fold it after you push the string through the tuner to fold it back really hard and create a kink in the string. That works great for metal strings. Don't do that with your cello strings. They'll be more likely to break. So you'll see I didn't kink it. It's just kind of floating there. I'm going to use a string winder to get this going really quick here. Let's see if I could do it. I realize the view's not perfect. I'll narrate as best I can. Uh, again, I'm avoiding putting a kink in it, a hard kink. I'm just going to let it wind by itself. Uh, this is really tricky to do in a way that is camera friendly. Thanks for your patience. There we go. Notice I didn't put a kink in it. I'm just letting the kink form as it winds. And there it goes. Uh, okay. I'm getting sound. It's alive. I'm going to tune it really quick. This one up, goes up to G. All right. The other low drone, I'll repeat the process. Again, I'll reiterate everything I said along the way just to uh, cement it in there when changing the low drones. Feed it through the end of the instrument. Pull the string into position over the bridge pin. Line it up where I'm going to cut it past the tuner, in this case here. Cover the area of the string that I'm going to cut with some super glue to prevent it from unwinding and losing containment there. Uh, you'll notice I did that with my fingers. It's just kind of a habit I've developed. I'm always hustling in the wood shop. Uh, you'll probably want to use a paper towel for that. Otherwise, you'll get a little super glue on your hands. Uh, again, to describe the process, when I put it through the, the machine tuner there, I'm going to use my string winder again. Again, don't, don't pull a hard kink into it. Just let that form as you wind it. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. Before I get too crazy, I'm going to make sure it's all lined up properly, which it wasn't. Again, I'm emphasizing I did not put a fold in the string. It, it'll happen naturally as I wind it. That's fine. Um, if you put a hard kink in it, there can be a tendency for the string to break a little more easily there. Given the expense of these strings, we want to save them as much as possible. All right. A really fun thing happened where it popped off the tuner. So that'll be a fun little dance. I'll just rewind it. string is popping off my tuner. That's the thing to watch out for. There we go. I want to mention <clears throat> When I say my string popped off the tuner, you see where it goes up and attaches to the tuner. It, it kind of flipped off the edge there. Something, something to watch out for when you're winding it if, if your hurdy-gurdy uses guitar tuners. Now in my case, I've got my low drones on. The next step would be to add cotton and rosin. 
I'm not going to do that here. I cover that in another video, and you probably are pretty comfortable with that technique anyway. Hopefully that demystified the drones. The secret is using super glue wherever you're going to cut the string, especially when you're cutting across the windings. And when wrapping the string and, and tuning it up, try not to form a hard kink in it. Uh, one will form when you're wrapping the string using the, the geared tuner. That's fine. Just don't literally fold the string. Uh, that's very hard on the strings. The other string I'm going to cover in this video is the trumpet. Uh, changing that one's actually pretty easy, but getting the trumpet to buzz properly afterwards can take a little bit of skill, and we'll cover what's involved with that here. Now in this case, I've got my original trumpet string on. I did not remove it in advance because there's some things I want to mention. The trumpet bridge, this little wooden bridge here, is held on by the string tension. It falls out really easily once the string is removed. So when you pull the string off, keep an eye on that little guy. You can see how small it is. There we go. You can see how small it is. It can get lost pretty easily if it's not attached to the instrument. So. Let's keep an eye on that. I'm going to go ahead and pull this string off. I've got my handy string winder. In this case, my string unwinder. All right. When I pull it off the instrument, I'm going to carefully pull it off the trumpet bridge. And then the little... My trumpet adjuster has a string that goes across to it. So I'm going to unthread it out of there. I'm going to keep hold of this because the new string is very important. The new cut string that it gets threaded through this part of the adjuster mechanism. Alrighty. Got my new string handy. Removing all vestiges of the old one. Feeding it through the base end of the instrument. Okay. Go through the thread of the adjuster mechanism. And I'll get in a little closer so you can have a, a better look at what I mean here. The, the adjuster peg has the string, which has a little loop in it. I just went right through there. I'll tie it off the end of the instrument. Now, this string is not wound like my cello strings for my low drones. This is just a straight gut string. The difference between a wound string and a monofilament string, a wound string has a core that might look something like this with a little uh, metal wire wrapped around it. Um, since this doesn't have that metallic wrap or any kind of wrap, it's okay just to cut it. It's not going to hurt the string on any level, no danger. So, I'm going to wrap this guy up really quick. Sorry, my workstation's getting a little crazy, y'all. You see I had a nice green tablecloth set up, and it's completely gone bananas. Um, again, I'll emphasize, when you're changing your trumpet, Unlike the drones, changing the string is quite easy because you don't have to worry about doing the super glue trick. I'm using a string winder for guitars just to tighten my string really fast. Alright, put it in alignment. Bringing it up to tension. Can you imagine doing it by hand if I didn't have this little gizmo here? By the way, string winders are available at music stores. I think I got this one at Guitar Center. I think it set me back like $4.50. was not a big deal. Prices may have gone up in the last year or two. 
All right, let's get back to our trumpet. Um, I have another string in the way. We'll do our best to work around that. Hopefully you can see, there we go. On mine, it's a red string. I set it so it crosses over that little bridge. There's a groove in the bridge. The string sets right in there. I have the thread there wrapped around the string. We'll do our best to narrate as we go. There's another look, look from a, more of a top down. Okay, the string's on. It'll technically work and generate sound. However, getting it to function properly can be a little more challenging because the trump this is the trumpet. This is how you get your rhythm on a hurdy-gurdy. I'm going to go ahead and cotton up my string. I'm putting rosin on the string itself. Don't use powdered rosin for that. Or if you do, um, I understand there's a video out there where people are rosining their wheel just adding rosin to the strings, not to the wheel itself. Um, that is not proper rosin technique and will cause you problems in the long run. I do put rosin on the strings to get the cotton to stick to them. I do put rosin on the strings to get the cotton to stick to them, but it's not a substitute for actually rosining the wheel. Okay, the first thing about adjusting your trumpet, you want to make sure you bring it up to proper pitch. The trumpet bridge will generally work best within a pretty narrow range of tension. Um, if the string's not tuned up properly, it's just not going to buzz properly. So I don't know if you can see that here. My tuner is telling me I've got a G. I need this to be a C, so I'm just going to bring it up to tension. That's what this string is designed to be. Okay. Now, as you can hear, my trumpet's actually behaving. But I'm gonna go through the setup process anyway. Whenever you change your trumpet string, these are the steps you'll need to go through. Um, otherwise, it'll cause you some grief. It won't function properly. The first step, I mentioned earlier we're gonna need a ruler. We wanna make sure our trumpet string, the red one, it follows a straight line. Now you see I'm putting it on this side of the wheel following the string. See if I can get in a little better there. I want the trumpet string to be straight as it goes over the edge of the instrument. If it curves inward, it will buzz uncontrollably. The more inward it is, for instance, of the string. Well, let's see if I can. There we go. I moved this end of the string inward like that. So now it's not a straight line. I have the string, which up here, I'm following the string line. I have my straight edge following along the trumpet string. And then you can, hopefully you see as I look down, this is no longer following a straight edge. The string, once it crosses over the trumpet bridge, it's curving inward. You don't want that. You want it to be a straight line or outward a little bit's okay. If it's inward, it's the more further in it slants, the more prone it's gonna be to buzzing, which can make it buzz uncontrollably, so you don't have any, or as much control over it when you're playing. So, one thing about the trumpet there, make sure your string follows as best to a straight line as you can, or outward a little bit. If, if you're unsure if you've got it, just make it come outward a little bit. That'll be okay. So I've got that handled. In mucking around with all that, my string has dropped down to an A. It's a new string, they stretch out, so that's another thing to kind of keep on top of the tuning with a new string.
Now this guy's behaving properly, but as I mentioned a minute ago, I'm going to go through the rest of the steps. The other thing you want to, or the next step we'll cover is cotton. I cottoned my string. You see that bottom red string there? If you're pretty comfortable with cotton technique, use as much, as little cotton as you can get away with, but enough. In other words, if you put too thin of cotton, it can start to sound scratchy as you have bare string touching bare wheel. So just enough cotton to do the job. I've done a bit of a sloppy job wrapping mine, mine here. As you can see, it's really fuzzy. It's not tightly wrapped around the string. I'm going to just kind of tighten that up. That is something that will affect the performance of the trumpet. What am I doing? I'm petting the string as I turn it to force wrap it, the cotton around it. You can hopefully see it's a little tighter there. One note, if you have too much cotton, your trumpet will give you a little grief there. Um, again, this is sounding good. There's one final adjustment. Uh, let's say the string's up to tension. You've got the ed, the straightness of the string, and you're in good shape. Your cotton is, is, is in a pretty good ballpark there. There's one more little trick, and that is the adjuster string. We have the peg here, which goes through the tailpiece and comes out underneath, and from the bottom of this peg is a string which goes to my trumpet string. When I say string, it's literally like thread, or in this case, hemp thread, and it wraps around. Uh, one thing you can do if it's not buzzing properly, okay, you'll see my string, hopefully you can see, it goes pretty low down to the soundboard. Wrap it as low as you can. Um, for instance, I'm talking about the string, which is right alongside of my finger, I can wrap it so it goes upward or downward. Keep it down as far as you can go. You'll get the best tone. If it just doesn't work, you could rewrap it, moving that string upward a little bit at a time until it's more res responsive. I'll demonstrate here. All right. I've got an extreme situation here. We can see that string is going off the soundboard at quite an angle. This guy right here. Uh, the higher it is, meaning the further up that goes, the more prone to buzzing it's gonna be. If it goes too high, it's gonna buzz kind of uncontrollably. You hear that? So I'm just gonna lower that. Generally go as low as you can get away with. If the instrument has been set up properly in the first place, you should be able to go quite low with it. Uh, here's another thing to point out. You'll see that thread is now going kind of at an angle like that. I like to keep it nice and parallel. Those are the basics. The final thing I'll mention, if your string, you go through these steps and you can't get it dialed back in, be sure to add a little rosin to your wheel. Uh, if the wheel is improperly rosined or under rosined, the dog won't be very responsive for that either. All right, friends. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, I've been away from here, so I'm gonna check in on the comments now. Catherine McLean. You need a specialized tool to wind the string on the tuner after you cut it. No, you could do it with your fingers. Uh, I use a string winding tool that for guitar tuners. Uh, they're designed for guitar players. You see we have our tuner. It has a little socket that just fits over the end here and you it makes it go a little more quickly. You don't need this tool. You can do it by hand. It just takes an extra 45 seconds. And who's got that kind of time, right? Other questions. Oh, Florida Fred. Fred Altensee. Um, good to see you here. 
Steve Wheeler, any rough estimate on string life? I love this question. Okay, the great thing about hurdy-gurdy strings is that your fingers don't really interface with them very much, and they're not made of metal. Uh, if you look at guitar strings, the strings are steel. The player is continually interfacing with the string as their fingers push down on the strings through various frets. Oil from the player's fingers soak into the strings. The strings start to corrode. They start to lose their tone and become more brittle until they break. If you're playing a lot, this can take a couple of months if you're a guitar player. Great thing about a hurdy-gurdy player is that your strings aren't interfacing, excuse me, your fingers aren't interfacing with the strings in the same way. So they're not really soaking up finger oils like steel strings do when you're continually touching them. And the other thing is they're not steel anyway on a hurdy-gurdy. They usually are either gut or have a synthetic core. Sometimes they'll have a metal winding around them, but the uh, gut and synthetic core doesn't really corrode the same way from players' fingers touching them. So the basic answer to your question, rough estimate on string life, 18 to 24 months, you'll start to think of changing them. Uh, one of the things I get hit with is, holy smokes, hurdy-gurdy strings are expensive, ex especially the gross board on the most expensive string on the instrument. Um, we sell it for, I believe, $42 on our website, which is actually very expensive for one single string. Uh, and even that's kind of cheap if you look around. We just buy in crazy uh, volume and try to keep the cost down as much as possible. But when you have just one string costing around 42 bucks, and then the rest of the string set, I mean, cumulatively 100 to 140 bucks for a string set for a hurdy-gurdy, you want them to last. So 18 to 24 months. The great thing about it is you have a little sticker shock when you pay for it, but if you're playing guitar pretty often and you factor a string change every month or two, you know, 10 bucks a pack time of, of guitar strings over 18 to 24 months, you, a guitar player might actually be spending a little more, more money as it amortizes out. Like for that same two year period, they might be spending 240 bucks on guitar strings. Uh, I realize I got a little overly verbose there. Hopefully it helped. I don't see any other questions. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Uh, be sure to send me messages throughout the week if you have any more questions about this content or have a topic in mind you would like to see. Otherwise, we'll see you next week.